Our last speaker of the morning session is uh, Selim Bizwani, and he's going to talk about uh, dynamics and dilation rotor act. So, first, I would like to thank the organizers for this very nice conference and for the invitation. So, yeah, so I'm going to try to explain the geometric side of uh, the story that Charles uh, told you just before. So, first, let me just give a bit of context. So the setting I'm interested in is the one of foliations on surfaces. various uh, generalized interval trans uh, exchange transformation. So. Okay. so the question I want to ask today is what sort of uh, behavior I am to uh, witness uh, generically for such variations or generalized uh, IETs. Okay, so first, well, let me re recall a rather old theorem by uh, Ishoto. It's that um, so uh, if so, <coughs> there is an open and dense sets of foliation that are more small. So it's a very vague statement. So when I say an open dense and set of foliations, I'm thinking of the space of foliations on a given surface uh, uh, with a, well, let's say a infinity with this infinity topology, and maybe I should also define what more smale mean, means. And uh, foliation is more smale uh, if uh, there is a finite number of closed orbits. Uh, which, which are the accumulation points of every leaf. It's a big vector. And if you take a leaf, you look at this, uh, its accumulation point is one of this finite close cover. Okay? So I think. So I think, well, a long time ago, people believed that most dynamical, well, all that, well, almost all dynamical systems should be more smale. Before, I think before smale. <laughs> and uh, so maybe those questions are a bit are outdated in a sense, but uh, I mean that that makes sense. And it turns out that it's not the case because you have examples of uh, stable dynamical systems which are not more smale. Distribution and okay, and this is a. This is open and dense, which tells you that those more small affiliations are ubiquitous in a sense, but that doesn't tell you really what you would expect on a, expect on a probabilistic level. And uh, this is more, has more to do with KAM theory that uh, uh, Matthäus uh, discussed in his talk. And uh, KAM theory works only for uh, diffeomorphisms of the circle with, well, sufficient regularity, I'm going to say infinity, not to cloud, to cloud the, the ideas that are behind it. And as Charles uh, explained uh, in his talk, uh, on a, at a measure theoretic level, um, the probabilistic level, level both more smale, say ms, and minimal, MS and middle coexist. <coughs> okay, so today I want to expose a form of 
meta conjecture. We will call this, we both have positive measure. Yes, exactly. So MS is going to have a positive measure just because it's open. It happens to be dense, like the shot of theorem, and <coughs> an open dense set doesn't need to have a full measure. So, yeah. so the meta conjecture is uh, that this. The case of deformorphism of the circle, so this corresponds to a foliation on the torus. Okay, and uh, the meta conjecture is that this coexistence uh, will only happen in this case. So, the conjecture would be so in genus one <laughs> with lower regularity. Why is it fine, for instance? Uh, MS is. Uh, so now, when I'm going to say generic, I'm going to mean in the measure theoretic sense of the uh, sense. It's generic and in genus uh, more uh, larger or equal to 2, MS is generic as well. We could discuss why this is true, but I think it has to do with the size of unstable manifolds for their normalization. So that's all I'm going to say about the context, and now I'm going to move to uh, something more formal and more basic. So I would like to introduce the object that I call violation surfaces. So by definition, a dilation sur surface is a, a surface that you get by putting polygons uh, along parallel sides. So, surface fills out after parallel sides. I sound familiar, and when I say parallel sides, I don't impose those sides to have same same length. Okay, so maybe I'm going to draw a picture. So I do this. Put my little trick. Two parallel sides. Shoot parallel lines. So this is far enough. They glue sides of the same color. Okay, so probably for those who prefer the language of geometric structures. Uh, so is that a piece of set a fine way of turning them or gluing sides or you can do it? So there is a unique, uh, a, fine, a fine map of the complex okay. plane, complexified, that, uh, that sends this uh, segment to this one and so on. Yes. There are two. It's two. Of course. It's only one that does it with preserving the orientation induced by uh, the interior of the polygon. Reversing the orientation. Reversing, orientation. Reversing the orientation. Wow. Yeah. The, one that, the one that makes the surface oriented. Uh, and if you prefer the language of geometric structure, it's a uh, C R star plus C. So this is the group of dil dilations acting on C structure with singularities. <coughs> so okay, what so this surface is a torus with two singularities. Okay. And so, usually when you're playing with uh, translation surfaces, you would compute the angle around the singularity. That's not what I'm going to do, because here I'm on the torus and the angle is going to be 2 pi. But when I go around a singularity, I see, well, maybe some would say a parallel transport, and you see some dilation when you go around the circle. That's basically what this means. And there is a number that you can associate to any a single point, which is the amount of dilation that you get when you turn it. Okay. 
And so, as in the case of uh, translation services, those, those services come with a, a family of uh, affiliation. So, let's say family of direction of affiliation. Parameterized by the circle. Okay, and so this foliation yeah, belong to the space introduced in the beginning. And uh, and the first return maps of those foliations are piecewise affine. That's why it sort of connects with what uh, Charles told you earlier on. And uh, and in the case of the torus, if you I don't know throw a a uh, simple closed curve that is transverse to the foliation, the first return map is going to be uh, a piecewise affine homomorphism of the circle. So these, well, this object uh, has a connection to piecewise affine homomorphism of the circle. Okay? So, another thing that I want to talk about this. So, again, that resonates with uh, what Charles said. Uh, the others, if you take some elements uh, of this family, you can see from the picture that you have uh, periodic orbits that um, are going to make the foliation more smaller. For instance, if you pick the middle point of this segment and the middle point of this segment, and you take the line that uh, joins them, then in the quotient it's going to be a simple closed curve, which is going to be a leaf of the foliation, and you can see that. Uh, the same in this direction, and you take any nearby leaf, and when it comes back, it comes back closer. What I'm saying is that if you take a little transverse map, the first return map is going to be contraction. It's contracting in a sense. So in this case, it's not hard to see that this foliation is more smooth. Whenever I can see this configuration, then I'm going to be more smooth. And that makes me want to introduce, so one last thing. That if I, I don't know why I draw this picture. <coughs> so I have a set of direction here, and for every single direction in this angular sector, I see a simple closed curve. Okay, and that's why I want to introduce uh, well. The geometric object associated to such a configuration. So if I just forget about the fact that I'm in the torus and I just look at this bit of the surface, the, the one that is uh, built out of these quadrilaterals that I've just drawn, and this is topologically a cylinder. Okay. I want to introduce the notion of uh, relation cylinders. cylinders. So if I take an angular sector, Place that zero in C, then of theta, and I take the map Z maps to lambda Z. The quotient of maybe this I'm going to call C theta, the cone of angle theta, and C, C theta. Uh, my delta the action of this map is a cylinder. It's what I need to find to be a cylinder. Cylinder of angle theta and of multiplier lambda. And those uh, cylinders you should think of as building blocks for those uh, uh, dilation surfaces. Okay. Thus, is there anything you wanted to say? Sorry. Okay. So one last, last thing that I want to introduce is when I have a dilation surface, so a sigma is a dilation surface. I will denote by uh, theta sigma the, the angle of the well, largest, in the sense of the angle, cylinder. Okay, so you have to check that this function is well defined, but that's not very difficult. 
and, uh, and it's a con so I'm going to introduce uh, moduli spaces in a second, but it's going to be a continuous function of the moduli space. It's going to be an important function in my story. So, yes. So from now on, I'm going to restrict to the case of uh, Tori with two singularities. And then this position simpler spaces. Now g equals to 1 and n, the number of singularities, equals to 2. OK, so I can call m the moduli space of uh, relation for I with two singularities. So here is such things up to, well, dilate dilation type uh, isomorphism. So when I think of a dilation tori, a torus, as in the case of translation surfaces, I think with a marked up direction. So a dilation surface and its image by rotation are not the same. Okay, nor do I, uh, so I can speak of the vertical creation or the horizontal creation. Okay, and there is this moduli space has a stratified structure, which uh, has to do with the uh, type of singularities. So again, on my top, on my torus with two singularities, I can go around the singularity and see how much uh, dilation I get. If I do this along one, I will find, yeah, say, a parameter lambda, and if I do it on the other one, I will, I will find minus lambda. If I take appropriate orientation, to, so there's essentially one parameter. So I'm going to consider m lambda, set of dilation tori. So it's just the natural stratified structure of this moduli space with two singularities and uh, dilation lambda around, say, P1, where my topological model is a surface with two mark points, P1. Okay. So, I'd like to just say that M is a six-dimensional manifold real dimension, and M lambda is, I guess, a five-dimensional lambda. You said lambda. Sorry. So lambda, sorry. So lambda, lambda, oh, sorry. <coughs> Dilation around V1 lambda. Right, that makes sense. I need something. So does five-dimensional also the space of five realities? No, but there's, there's an essential R, actually. I mean, uh, well, when you suspend uh, five ID, so you need to sort of some parameters to the Yes, you have extra parameters. Yeah. So what do you put on some parameters? Sorry? Oh, because you're fixing the multipliers. So no, no, I'm not fixing the multipliers. No, no, no. It's just, I mean, you can, you can make accounts if you like. On You have a, an hexagon, so six complex parameters, a sum up to one, and then you have to glue. Uh, so, I mean, that's very elementary. Is there kind of a general formula for the for the dilation type to satisfy? Yeah, yeah, yeah there is a general. I don't know. <laughs> my on top of my head. But I mean, it's just a simple counter. Yeah. Okay, and so I'm not going. So you can define a, yeah, in a very like straightforward way an cell to our action on the space. But today I'm only be. Uh, that's it. I, I'll, I'll only be concerned with uh, the Teichmann of flow, so the action of. Uh, so, so, that means, so the question I'm interested in, of course, is to understand what's the typical behavior of such a foliation. Okay, so if I'm just going to introduce the last one. E is going to be uh, the set of subsets of M made of um, tor tori whose, say, vertical foliation is minimal. <laughs> okay. And okay, and last thing I have a Teichmann of flow. Which is the action of this subgroup on M lambda. Okay, so the theorem I want to tell you about today is the following. So, 
uh, almost every every uh, no sorry so the Leibniz measure of e is equal to zero, and this implies. So what is the measure? Okay, so I mean, there are two answers. Either I can construct an invariant measure for the Teichmann flow, or you can just. This question makes sense if you have a manifold. The class of the Lebesgue measure is well defined. So the fact that it has Lebesgue measure zero would be you take any measure in coordinates that is the Lebesgue measure and it has measure zero, which implies that uh, Morse male is uh, probabilistically. This is generic. Okay, because you, you can see that, uh, well, up to uh, foliation which has saddle collections, uh, E is the complement in, uh, in M of those uh, most male uh, foliations. Maybe that, that's an exercise. Okay, good. So, um, do I have left 10 minutes? Um, yes. Okay, great. So, have a bit of time to. Uh, tell you how the proof works. So the idea behind this proof is to try to understand the geometry of the moduli space and, and try to, well, the idea behind it is that the, the action of the Teichmann flow should behave on this moduli space as the ge geodesic flow of a hyperbolic manifold of infinite volume. Well, of course, that's just, well, an analogy, and in practice, it works a bit differently. So, to use my notes. Is the dilatation real or? Sorry? Is the lambda oh, real? Of course, sorry. So, uh, the dilat dilation has to be real because uh, I. I so the way I define it is I glue along parallel sides. So when you go around a single point, you're just going to cross parallel sides. So the parallel transport is not going to, to have an effect on the angle. Okay. So yes. So yes. I said what really uh, my m lambda and the Teichmann flow. I want to say it's uh, like the. analogy work, I need uh, to say things about the geometry of M lambda. <laughs> and lambda is as well, uh, this function theta that I had defined and probably erased, which is uh, uh, the angle of the largest uh, cylinder that you see in your surface is going to come into play. What do you mean by the largest cylinder? What's the largest angle? Largest in, in angle, yes. Okay, I'm going to throw a picture. So really what, what my to do with the surface. So this is a hyperbolic surface between this one with infinite volumes that has a funnel. And well in my story I also have a cusp. Okay. And this cusp is uh, the set, so maybe I'm going to call it C, the cup well, I'm going to call it cusp, is the set of uh, torus for which this angle is small. So say less than pi over four. Okay. So, oh, maybe something yeah, I forgot to say, uh, very important. So there is, uh, there is a uh, GT invariant uh, measure, new. Measure 
measure mu, which is equivalent to the Lebesgue measure. The same class of Lebesgue measure. Infinite. Infinite. So the measure of m lambda is yes. Yeah, this this is for statement for maybe it's the e lambda and for o lambda and one one corresponds to the stations of this of course will be true. And so this is infinite. And the measure of this cusp is finite. So the measure is finite. And that's for the key thing. And then I need something to link the geodesic flow, the action of the geodesic flow to the action to the actual dynamics of the surface I'm looking at. So uh, where do I want to go. Basically, what's going to happen is that when you take a Morse mail, uh, uh, a Morse mail uh, direction, when the vertical foliation is Morse mail, then it's going to go straight in the cusp, uh, in the cusp, in the in the fiber. So it's going to escape an infinity in the infinite volume part of my uh, my modular space. You remove the cusp; it's not compact. Sorry. Sorry. Yeah. So you can't move cusp. So this, I mean, so, okay, I'm, I'm a bit like yeah, drawing on this uh, terminology that uh, people from my public geometry use. So when you have an infinite uh, part of the surface that is a finite volume, people tend to call it a, to call it a cusp, and this they tend to call it a final funnel. Oh, funnel, funnel. Okay. Okay. So now dynamics of GT. So if if the vertical foliation, let's say. If t, I'm going to say t, thinking of the vertical foliation of t, is more snail, then gt of uh, t, t to uh, infinity, goes to infinity, let's say, final. Okay, and this is very easy, it's just a, a geometry. And okay, so now I need, I need something a little extra, so there's this criterion, we call it a maser. Criterion for dilation surface. Criterion is the following. So I've got my set E. I want to show that E is a uh, zero Lebesgue measure. So what I want to look at is, is density points in E. Okay? Because if you have something that's positive measure, it must have a lot of density points. So the criterion goes like this. So let's T be an element of E. If GT, so if the Angle function measured along GT doesn't go to zero. Then T is not a density point for e. Okay, and now you have like pretty much everything you need to conclude because. Okay, I just want to show that, I mean, so if you have a, uh, a set and you want to show that it's a measure zero, you just need to show that it's uh, then CT points have measure zero. Okay, and this criterion uh, with the ergodic, uh, well, ergodic, uh, theory, well, the ergodic properties of this flow must have measure zero. Because assume the set of T which are um, in E which are not uh, which are density points as um, positive measure then the angle along that geodesic uh, curve geodesic uh, yeah, has to has to go to zero which means that they are escaping in the cusp okay but this cusp has finite uh, as finite volume so this is impossible because you, you want to send a, a positive amount of mass in a cusp that has finite mass. So it's escaping, and this is smaller and smaller and smaller. So you cannot fit at to some point like a finite number of mass. So really, combining those arguments, you just get that uh, uh, E as measure zero. Zero and more smaller is 
So that concludes the proof of the theorem. So just to say that a, cor a corollary of this theorem is that uh, uh, a piecewise uh, a, a fine omega of the circle is generically, and again in the measure theorem text sense, uh, more small. So, so is this with, with a, this fixed number? Sorry, with, uh, with, uh, with two branch points, uh, two break points. So I guess I should stop. Thank you. analogy works. Because all that dimension has, has to do with the time you would spend in the cusp. Like you could spend in the cusp. So really there's something well the difficulty in this uh, in this proof is proving this. I mean it's not very difficult but it's I, I, I don't know a better way to do it with a heavy computation. Uh, so I mean in that in this case I think from the computation maybe you, you should be able to say something. If you have more than one, uh, could, could you have more, more, more conical? Okay, another, okay, so you could, well, or IT you could ask me, why do I do it for only two? It's because I don't know how to build an invariant measure uh, in... So it's sort of, this, this invariant measure is sort of a, I mean, the way I see it so far, a low-dimensional miracle. Okay, so what, what, what happens is that you, if you take the foliation induced by the SL2 reaction, its transverse structure is very simple, so you can put a measure on the transverse uh, structure and use the Hell measure on this of SL2R to, to, to build this invariant measure. <coughs> In general, so, yeah, I have I, yeah, no. Yeah. Is this a lot, can you say something about ergodicity of, a, of billiards and quadrilaterals, I mean, ge generic, irrational billiards, is that? No, is nothing to do with it, this nothing to do with it. This. Nothing to do with it. Okay, you don't, you can't build a... No, no, it's a, really it's a one-dimensional problem when when this would be a two-dimensional problem. It's, yeah, very different. Right, let's find the speaker then.